Hey YouTube, so uh, here I am with my eye on again, and uh, today I'm actually going to show you how to clean your reg. I actually just got asked on my uh, how to disassemble uh, video and to do this, so here you go, whoever sent that. Sorry, I forgot what your name is. Okay, so to start off, um, what you want to do is take off your bottom line, or your ASA. Um, simply, um, with a drop forward, you can just take out these two. There will always be two screws in the bottom of it. If it's a rail or it's a direct mount ASA, you have to just take out the two screws and your ASA should come off. And then it'll just be hanging by this macro line. So all you have to do to take off this macro line is pull back this collar right here, if you can see that. Just pull that back and then this slides right out. You can take off both sides if you wanted to change the macro line, if it's too long, too short, whatever. You can just buy a new macro line. Um, next up, you need to actually take the regulator off the uh, the trigger grip, or the trigger frame, sorry, which uh, at first will be a pretty difficult task. It took me quite a long time to figure it out, but um, if you look at it from the bottom, you have to turn it this way. It has to go uh, counterclockwise to get it off. And really the best way to do it is to just hold on to it as firmly as possible and twist the gun sort of sharply and it just comes loose just like that and then you can twist it off and for now I'm finished with this trigger frame. Okay so now here is your ion regulator you can just slip off this which is completely unimportant and you have no need to take off this macro line fitting um, at all during this lube. This is just to lube and disassemble your regulator, so you don't need to do any of that. So to start up, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and try to get you a better view. All right. So zoomed in a little bit, get you a better view, and um, so what you want to do is take out this. Uh, set screw right here and this set screw which is inside this little plate if I turn this a little bit you, can, you won't be able to get it but uh, you just have to turn your uh, velocity adjustment to the right, spe the right spot where you can see this set screw and I don't know what size this allen wrench is but it's maybe two or three sizes smaller than the one eighth size that's for pretty much everything else on the gun so um, that I don't even know what size it is so anyways you just take out both of these set screws. This one's really small. And at first it'll be a little bit of a snap to take it out uh, for the first time. And you should tighten these down pretty tight. Just take it out. Be sure not to lose these because they're really small. Don't want to lose something like that. And on this one there's a washer that you don't want to lose. It would probably be pretty hard to replace. Alright, so next you actually have to twist out your velocity adjustment uh, the complete uh, distance of the threads. So I'm just going to do that for you. You have to turn this to the right too, just to take it out so that everything pretty much in the regulator is reverse threaded. So I'm going to do that for you right now. Alright, so this is completely unthreaded now. And um, all you have to do is take this out. And this has really nothing you have to do anything with. That's really just a hole. It's a fancy hole in the end of there. So you can just set that aside. Um, next up, you're going to need a deep well uh, 9 16 socket. So here's what that would look like, just like this. Oh, okay. It's, it has to be a deep well no matter what, because it's not going to reach all the way down there. If you can see inside there, uh, around the around the piston in there, yeah, there's a really flat uh, piece of, it's sort of like a, the end of a nut, but it's really, really small. So you have to put a lot of pressure on here and push as hard as you can and try to turn this off. Um, and of course it goes to the right again, so it's reverse threaded. But um, if you're really having trouble with that, what I did was return it back onto the trigger frame, which then um, you turn it right onto here. So once it's turned in all the way onto there, then you can turn it right on here and you'll have more grip using the trigger frame. But I left it loose just to show you guys this so I didn't have to waste all my time. Oh, oh. Okay. Then you just have to, you have to push down on here and make sure that you're not wrecking these because I did that pretty badly the first time I took apart this regulator. So 
I managed to get it on tight enough that it wouldn't leak, but be really careful when you're doing that not to uh, to strip the the head of that bolt. So you can see it coming up there. There we go. So now you can see that it, oh, it actually fell right out. So that's the end cap of your regulator uh, assembly inside there. Then a uh, spring will fall out right there. This is actually magnetic. I think the spring is magnetic. Or actually it's not maybe. It's a little bit. Anyways, so then those will come out. You don't really have to do anything with that. But the important thing is the piston that's left inside there. So what you have to do is get something like a pen or a dowel or a piece of tubing or something to push that out that's not metal. So you're not damaging it or scratching it or anything. And it shouldn't be too difficult to push out, just to put a little bit of pressure on it. And there's your piston, pretty much the working part of your regulator. And that is what you actually have to lube. So um, I'm going to clean this off for you right here. And you want to get all this old grease out of here. And always use Dow 33 or Shocker Lube or whatever. I just have a small tub of it, which I have to go grab. So, I'll be right back. So get all the grease out of there. Clean it up nicely. And there you go. So, now all you have to do is lube this just like you would your bolt, or really any other O-rings. Just get your Dow 33, a little bit on your finger, and run it all the way around. Hopefully you can see that okay. Just run it around the O-rings. Alright, there you go. So, once you've gotten those oiled up, uh, greased up, whatever, doesn't matter, um, you can set this off to the side. Now you just want to put everything back into the regular, the regulator casing, just like before. So you drop that in big end first. Goes in just like that. Okay, I still have grease on my hands. Then you drop in the spring. It doesn't matter which way that goes in. And then, uh, drop in the end. Make sure that's in correctly. And then you screw this in just like you had taken it out. Alright. Oh, crap. Hopefully it's set off now. Okay, it's fine. Um, so, uh, I just put this in as pretty much as hard as I can. And hopefully it won't leak. You just have to pretty much put it in as, with as much strength as you can. And uh, then it should be alright. Um, you just have to replace these set screws now. And where did my Allen wrench go? I'm stupid. It's right here. Okay, so now you just have to return these set screws into their original spot. It's rolling away on me. And these have to be pretty tight. Make sure that nothing's moving around in there. And those are regular threaded, in case you're wondering. And of course, before you can put this one in, you have to replace your volume, or your uh, velocity adjusting piece. Which I'll screw in fast there. Okay. You just have to put it in far enough for the set screw to go in. So, once you see that... One more. All right. Now there's enough room there for you to put in the set screw. So put on your Allen key. Okay. Now once that is in all the way, tighten it up nice and snug. And there you go. So now your regulator is completely back together. All you have to do is return this rubber piece to it, and you're done.